Yo, how's it going? So in today's video, we're going to learn how to create a scroll to top button in React. This is going to be a pretty fairly simple tutorial. And uh, this is it right here. So I have a bunch of lorem ipsum from Futurama. And if I scroll down a little bit, I'll see that I have a button that appears. I click it, it, takes me to the very top. Let's get into it. All right, so I have a semi brand new React app made right here. And the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to create two files. So inside my source folder, I went ahead and created a folder called components, and that's where we're going to be making all of our components. So the first component that we're going to be creating is going to be called back to top text.js. This is going to host all of our lorem ipsum. And the next one will be back to top button.js. This is where all of our button logic is going to be held. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and copy this app.js stuff and paste it into both of these files. And I will rename, well, first of all, I'll get rid of this app.css import since we don't need that. And I'll rename this function app to be back to top text. Same thing down here and right here as well. So back to top button. Copy this bad boy right. Oops, copy this bad boy right here and put it right here. And just to make sure that we uh, have everything working, I am going to just type in some text. So I'll say hello world. And I'll go ahead and import that into here. So I'll do back to top text with a self closing brace. And now if I go into the actual app, we should see hello world. Perfect. Now let's go ahead and work on the actual lorem ipsum and then we'll get the button to work. The lorem ipsum that we're going to be using is from a show called Futurama. It's called Philorama.io. If you haven't seen the show, I'd highly recommend watching it. It is a masterpiece in my opinion. So I'm going to go in my back to back to top text and I'll get rid of this hello world. And all of the lorem ipsum, I just copied, I'll paste it like three times, let it clean up itself a little bit. And now if we go into the actual app, we should see a whole bunch of text. Perfect. And what we'll also do is at the very bottom here, we'll just go ahead and import our back to top button component. So that'll be back to top button with a self closing brace. All right, so now we got all the text, everything working. Now let's go ahead and actually build our button. So at the very top here, I'm gonna go ahead and import all of our stuff that we need. So I'll do import react from react and I'll do import, we need use effect and use state from react. And now within our actual function, I'm gonna go ahead and create a basic use state variable. So I'll do const back to top button and let's do set back to top button is equal to use oops use state is equal to false perfect so very quickly this use state variable is going to be used to um, display our actual button in a ternary operator later on and below all of this i'm going to go ahead and make a use effect with arrow function, curly brace, and an empty array block right here. And so the first thing that we're going to have to do is we are going to have to create an add event listener on scroll. So I'll do window dot add event listener. And you want it to trigger on scroll, arrow function. And we want to say that if window dot scroll y, so if somebody scrolled, let's say more than 100 pixels, we want to set our uh, back to top button use state variable to true. So I'll do set back to top button to be true. Else we'll just do set to back button to be false. And now, oops, and now let's go ahead and create our function that is going to be responsible to actually on the click of the button, take us to the very top of the page. So that'll just be called const scroll up is equal to arrow function and I'll do window dot scroll to and we want to scroll to top at zero and we want to give it a behavior of smooth now you can give it a behavior of auto uh, this won't have that smooth uh, scroll to the top it'll just instantaneously go to the top 
and for this whoops and for this top if you have let's say a nav bar if you know what the height of the nav bar is then you can add like let's say if the nav bar was 150 pixels then you can add 150 it'll avoid showing the nav bar and just show the content so let's keep it at zero since we don't actually have any content there and now let's go ahead and create our ternary operator that is going to be responsible for displaying our actual button so that's going to be real simple all i'm going to do is back to top button and curly brace inside of here i'll do a button and i'll do there's this uh Right above the six, if you hold shift, there's this uh, arrow that points up. And for some styling, just to make sure that we can actually see the button and it's not too too small, I'll do position to be fixed. Bottom, let's say, what are you yelling at us for? Okay, I think that should be fine. Uh, bottom, let's do 50 pixels. Next thing, we'll do right, 50 pixels. Height to be, oops, 50 pixels. Uh, width, same thing, 50 pixels. And to actually see the actual arrow itself, I'll just do a font size of, uh, same thing, 50 pixels. And if we save it, we should see our arrow right there. So when we scroll down at about a hundred pixels, we will now see the arrow. And if we click it, nothing happens, which makes sense because we never applied our on click function to the button. And for that, all we're going to do is on click is equal to scroll up. And now if I go up, refresh the page real quick, just to make sure. I scroll down about 100 pixels, let's go to the bottom of the page, I click it, and it smoothly goes right to the top. Perfect. Just really quickly, the reason that we created two different files, uh, one for the text and one for the button, is because if we had a different page where we wanted this button to appear, we don't want to keep making this code over and over and over again. From a modularity standpoint and a clean code, we put it into its own component, and we're just importing that component into its own file. So like imagine if we took all of this text and we actually added more to it, it would just be, it would be too big. And uh, yeah, so that concludes this tutorial. Um, try messing around with CSS, uh, try using a front end library with it. Um, and if this worked for you, if this helped you out, be sure to like, comment and subscribe. And I'll see y'all in the next one.